What's up YouTube? KS Gun Guy here. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to stick around. There's a lot of good content on this video and hopefully you'll find it useful. And I'm really looking forward to reading your comments and your questions about this firearm or any of the firearms on the channel. So be sure to stick around and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks! What's up YouTube? KS Gun Guy here. Thanks for joining me as always. If you like what you see here, do be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And there's more content on the way as always. So I've got in front of you today the 6-hour P320 Compact RX. Now I know we've all gotten pretty familiar with the 6-hour P320 lineup, whether it's a subcompact, the compact, or the full size, and even the full size RX, which has been out for a little while now, but 6-hour just finally decided to, real, uh, to, uh, to release the P320 Compact RX, and uh, I've been very impressed with the P320 line, and uh, the Compact is probably my favorite of them all, really from a size standpoint more than anything else, and, uh, and I was really excited when they said they were going to do the RX. Um, this was kind of at SHOT Show, or around SHOT Show, maybe a little bit before, but it's taken a while for them to actually get uh, to the market, at least in a limited run. Now, I say that because... Sig Sauer is is kind of known for being a little bit behind the eight ball. Sometimes they'll say they've got a gun out, and sometimes they're fast to get it to the market, and they're pl they're plentiful. But sometimes uh, they're a little bit harder to come by. And uh, in fact, I think I had a commenter on uh, my RX, my full size RX video, say that uh, the gun is made of unobtainium. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, so uh, so I was able to stumble upon this uh, at uh, at a local gun store, not my normal local gun store, Center Fire Shooting Sports, unfortunately. Uh, I'd rather give them the business as always, but I uh, happened to find it at another store, and I really just had to jump on it because I wasn't sure when I was going to see that again, and Center Fire wasn't really sure uh, when they were going to be able to get their hands on it, and I think that's probably the case with a lot of local gun stores around the area. Um, they, they, this, uh, uh, the RX is a little bit of, I guess you could say, a limited run right now, although I think it's probably going to be a normal inventory item. At least I hope so. I hope people have the opportunity to make a choice between the uh, the regular compact and the RX. So let's dive in a little bit and talk about some of the differences between these two guns. So of course, as always, it is unloaded. I'm going to keep that unloaded magazine in it for now. I just kind of like that. I prefer that. And put a couple of props up here a little bit. So, uh, by and large, the P320 Compact shares a lot of things with its uh, with its normal sibling, I guess you could say, uh, at least in terms of size and dimension. Aside from the Romeo One red dot, so the overall length of the gun is 7.2 inches. The height is 6.1 inches. That is 6.1 with the Romeo on it. The width is 1.4 inches, uh, so that has not changed at all. And 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 I've always said that the uh, the P320 lineup is a little bit stout from a width standpoint, but 1.4 inches still certainly a, a carryable firearm, of course. The barrel on it is 3.9 inches. The weight is going to be 25.8 ounces, so the sight doesn't really add a whole lot to it. The trigger on this, they say, and this is all coming from the 6-hour website, is 6.5 pounds. I'm going to put that to the test. Now, you'll see I actually do have, and hopefully you can see that there, uh, I have the uh, the Apex flat trigger on it. I actually just moved it over from the uh, from the regular compact that I have. And, uh, and I, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with this trigger. I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a bit. The finish on it is going to be the standard uh, SIG Nitron finish. And, uh, and since this is the black black model, it's not the FDE model, or I really consider more of a bronze model, I'll show you in a moment. Um, this is certainly a very robust finish. I hear that the, the FD model, FDE model rather, uh, is not quite as durable. That's just what I've heard. I haven't had that experience myself, but again, I don't carry these guns. Um, I, I tend to carry a smaller firearm. So the magazines that you can expect with it are going to be two 15-round steel magazines. 
just like this guy right here. And they're good magazines. Unfortunately, they're a little bit, a little bit expensive. So if you wanted to pick up extra magazines uh, after you pick up the firearm, you're going to be looking at spending $35 to $45, kind of around there, depending on where you find them. Now, one of the nice things about the Compact, and this shares the same features with a lot of other firearms out there these days, including firearms like Smith & Wessons and Glocks, uh, what have you. You can fit, and this is a 17 round magazine uh, from the full size. And then we can get to our 21 round magazine here. And it's kind of cool, although it's it's kind of unfortunate that it uh, doesn't sit flush. But again, this is really, this magazine's designed more for a full size. But it is nice that, uh, that you can upsize your magazines with this. Uh, I, I do like that quite a bit. Now, as far as the trigger goes, um, the, the apex trigger, the flat trigger on this, um, I like this trigger quite a bit, but, and, and feel free to leave hate comments if you want. I know this is a bad habit, but when I fire a firearm, I don't use the tip of my finger. I just don't. My hands are a little bit too big. So I actually kind of wrap my finger around just a little bit. And what that means is when I'm shooting the firearm, after a while, after two, three hundred rounds, whatever, I get a tiny bit of a blister right on the bottom of my finger pad. And, and that's just kind of the way it goes. Um, you know, if, if I'm shooting 300 rounds, 400 rounds at the range, I just can kind of expect that with a lot of firearms, including this with the flat trigger. Now, if it's with the regular trigger, and I will show you that on the old compact here, this is the regular trigger. Um, I don't find that to be a problem simply because of the, uh, the curve of the firearm. It just wraps around your finger a little bit more and protects your finger. I may someday go back to that uh, trigger. It's a fine trigger. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Uh, the Apex trigger, I think, really the only advantage of that, because it's flat, you uh, it, it changes the, the, the pull dynamics, I guess, a little bit of the firearm. So uh, some would say maybe that it's a little bit easier to pull, but it doesn't actually change the poundage uh, on the gun whatsoever. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the trigger and, and we'll test the pull and everything. And of course, there's shooting coming up here in just a little while. But uh, in terms of the Romeo 1 Red Dot, um, I like it quite a bit. Um, I've got some experience with this because I do have the full-size RX as well. I may wheel that in here in a little while. We'll see. But, uh, but basically, it's, it's, a, it's a reasonably standard uh, Red Dot. Um, of course, it's got your controls on your left side. The profile of it does stick out from the firearm a little bit, and, and some may say, and I'll kind of get that in your face, and I'll turn the dot on here in just a moment, but uh, the one thing I really like about that versus some of the other red dots, like maybe a Burris Fast Fire 3 or something, is it does give you a little bit more of a field of view in there. So I'm okay with it sticking out from the profile of the gun itself if I'm going to get a little bit more of a field of view. Uh, it's a good quality sight. It is top loading, so the battery does go on top. You don't have to remove the sight. I love that. There are some red dots or RMRs out there where you do have to remove uh, the reticle to uh, be able to change the battery. So um, I think this definitely has an advantage. And it is uh, water, I guess you could say waterproof, and I think they say it's up to one meter. So I don't know that I'd throw it in a diving pool or anything like that, but uh, but if you're outside and you're shooting and, and it's raining a little bit, uh, you should be okay. That shouldn't be a big deal at all. Now, of course, it is adjustable for uh, for windage and for elevation, and uh, it is a three MOA uh, dot sight uh, for those of you who are wondering. And uh, and I believe the clicks on here are a half MOA per click. Um, I think it's either a half or one MOA. I believe I read that it was a half on uh, on Sig's website. But the nice thing is, it is sighted in from the factory, so you should be good to go. And a good way to test for that. Now, it does have suppressor height night sights on it. Another really nice feature of the gun. When you're zeroing in, and I will go ahead and uh, and turn the sight on here a little bit, and hopefully the camera will be able to pick this up. The last time I did it, it, it didn't go over so well. Actually, I am going to see if I can turn it on a little bit brighter than that, just so it's easier to see. There we go. All right. See if I can line this guy up here a little bit. A good way to test if it's zeroed in is if the dot, if you're lining your uh, suppressor height sights up so you're co-witnessing through the optic, 
if the dot is really hitting your front sight uh, while you're co-witnessing, then you should be good to go. And it's a good way to readjust it if you need to. Um, and of course, if, if for whatever reason you have a preference um, from a height standpoint, if you shoot low or shoot high, left, right, whatever, you can make those adjustments. But, uh, but again, it does come zeroed from the factory. So uh, it's a good feature. It's nice to be able to just grab it out of the box and be able to go shooting. Uh, otherwise, the features are basically the same on this as it is with other uh, P320s. It does have your uh, your plastic or your polymer frame. And one thing about these frames that I think is a little bit of a bummer, they're not very scratch resistant. They tend to get scratched up pretty quickly, especially the FDE version. Uh, at least I have found that to be the case. So if you're wanting this to be pristine and, and uh, never have any marks or anything, you might be disappointed a little bit, especially with the FDE uh, model. But uh, from an ergonomic standpoint, I'm going to put my magazine back in here. From an ergonomic standpoint, I actually really like the P320 grip. I think it's fine. Now, some people say that these, uh, the texture here, these kind of little tiny squigglies that go all around the grip on the front, the back, and the sides are a little bit slick. Um, I don't really find that to be the case very much. I mean, yeah, they could probably have a little bit more texture, but not a lot. I think they do just fine. So I think it's a very ergonomic firearm. I am right-handed and it fits really nicely with me. I'm able to get right up to this, uh, I guess, faux beaver tail, so to speak. Now, of course, a lot of people would say that the uh, the six hour has a pretty high bore axis. I would agree with that, but uh, but if you're able to get your hand up reasonably high, um, it, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I, I don't know that many people that uh, that would that it would really uh, hinder their shooting or or they would notice that much. Um, I guess unless you spend just a, a ton of time with Glocks or maybe Styres or something like that, where the bore axis is super low or even CZs. But uh, but otherwise, I think this is certainly a very shootable firearm. I've noted in previous uh, P320s that I feel like the slides on these are a little bit slide heavy, and that's because the frame is so incredibly light. Now with the compact, I think it's a reasonably good balance. Uh, the slide is still just a little bit chunky, however with the RX on the back of it, or the Romeo rather, it does bring the weight back just a tiny bit, which is, uh, which is good. Uh, and so it's a little bit less slide heavy than the full size, but, uh, but not by much. Uh, but again, from a size standpoint, I think the compact is, is really just kind of that, that Goldilocks zone, so to speak, from a size standpoint, at least for me. Now, otherwise, again, the features are the same. You do have your uh, mag release button here, and it's a nice positive mag release, and, uh, and it really does shoot the magazine right out of the gun, which is good. Uh, it does have your takedown lever, and, uh, and all of the newer R mo uh, RX models rather will come with what I would call kind of a version 1.5 uh, version of the takedown lever. So it's going to be trimmed down, and uh, it's got a little bit of texture in it, um, a couple of serrations versus the version one, which does stick out a little bit more. It's a heftier chunk of metal. And then your slide release is actually a little bit thinner. Um, it is ambidextrous on the slide release, but it's just a little bit thinner, so it's less obtrusive and less likely maybe to catch on clothes if you decide to carry this. However, it is still good enough to be able to actuate. And when I'm shooting this, now I prefer an overhanded rack on most guns. I'm just kind of used to that. Uh, unless I'm competing, and then I'll use my uh, slide release. Now, with the RX models, I do use the slide release. I'm not fond of trying to rack my hand up there because I'm afraid I'm going to get my hands all over that reticle and make it a little bit harder to see through. That's just me. Um, your mileage may vary. Of course, you could do a, a, a rack from the back uh, as well, uh, and that will work. So from a cost standpoint, uh, the RX uh, is a reasonably good value. Um, now, uh, I was able to get this... Oh, I think like $850 uh, plus tax. So I probably paid a little bit more. If you really look around, you could probably find this at the eight or just barely sub $800 mark plus tax. But I figure uh, with the gun by itself, generally $550 to $600, depending on where you find it with the night sights on your regular uh, uh, P320 compact, with the addition of the Romeo, which I, I think MSRP is somewhere between $300 and $350, it still is a pretty good value, especially when you're getting the raised uh, night sight, so you don't have to do any aftermarket fitting or aftermarket work on it to get it to co-witness or to do what you want it to do out of the box. And of course, it has the exact same trigger system that you would find in any of the P320s. Um, it is modular, so you can remove this, and you can change your frames. 
you can put it into uh, one of their uh, exchange kits, I think they call them, so you can change calibers or change size, all that sort of thing. Now the subcompact, unfortunately, does not come in an RX uh, version. We may see that next year. Who knows? Um, I've not heard any rumors, not trying to start any rumors, but you never know. They might do that. Um, so, uh, by and large, and of course it does have the, uh, uh, the, the rail, your accessory rail for lights, lasers, grenade launchers, things like that. So again, uh, from a design standpoint, it really, it mirrors the other P320s with the addition of the, uh, uh, of the red dot and the sights. So let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of shooting at the range and see how it does. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that footage at the range. So I have found when shooting the compact, and it's the same, and as you can see, I brought out its big brother. Um, I, I found that uh, I tend to shoot these a little bit low, and part of that is it, it's just me uh, more than anything else. The guns are, both of these guns are certainly very accurate or as accurate as their non-RX counterparts. I'm still getting used to red dot shooting, and, and I shoot a lot of guns for this project, for the channel, um, and a lot of them don't have red dots, so when I get back into a red dot and start shooting, shooting again, it takes a while for me to kind of reacquire that skill set a little bit, and again, I'm still developing it. So I tend to shoot these guns low. Now, with the compact, I don't shoot it quite as low, or maybe I'm getting a little bit more used to red dot shooting, but, uh, but the full-size RX... I definitely shoot low, and uh, and I still have not mastered it. And also, part of it is 
This one is a little bit more slide heavy, like I was saying, but, uh, but otherwise um, the features uh, in the fit and finish are exactly the same between the two. So I'll get this back out of the way, not really a full size uh, comparison or anything like that at this point. I may do a video like that later on down the road. So in terms of the trigger, let's go ahead and test the trigger a time or two. I don't like to do this very many times. First of all, I think it's crazy boring to watch somebody do this a whole bunch of times, but we'll try it just yeah, a couple times and, and see what happens. So, and again, keep in mind, this is the apex trigger. So, well, that didn't pull. We'll try that again. I am so bad at this. All right, uh, four pounds, 7.7 .7 ounces. That is certainly coming in under uh, the 6.5 pounds that SIG says it will do. We'll try this again. All right, uh, so five pounds, 6.7 ounces. I wanna try that one more time. That's an ounce difference between the two. Keep in mind, I'm the one pulling this thing and I am terrible at this. All right, five pounds, 8.2 ounces. So uh, so that first pull was probably kind of a lucky pull there a little bit. Um, I would say that uh, with the apex trigger, you're probably gonna average somewhere in the, in the five and a half pound range or so. Uh, by and large, uh, but uh, but I, again, I have a love hate relationship with this. Um, I, I some days I want it, some days I don't. So we'll see. Uh, thankfully, it's not terribly difficult to uh, to change out. About ten minutes, a couple of swear words, and a little spring, and you're good to go. So overall, I really like the P320 lineup, and I love the RX lineup, and I love it simply because it does have that red dot, and it just it gives you a different type of uh, shooting mechanic, and, and it's just a different experience at the range. So is the P320 Compact RX a carryable gun? Absolutely, it definitely is. You want to be mindful of a couple of things. Of course, the raised sights and the RX, but uh, there are certainly... Uh, holsters out there on the market for it, and uh, and you could definitely run with it. It's not terribly heavy, um, so so you you certainly could. I, it's not for me. I tend to carry smaller firearms. I'm I'm just kind of wimpy that way. I prefer a smaller firearms, so it's not dragging me down, um, and it still does the job for me. I can still put put uh, bullets where I need to uh, if I need to. So, uh, but again, overall, I really like the gun. I think it's a lot of fun. It's uh, it's certainly worth the money if you're looking to get into a red dot optic because you don't have to buy the gun and, and put it all together like maybe a Glock MOS and then you also don't have to send it away and have somebody mill something out for you which uh, which is fine there's nothing wrong with that uh, but if for some reason the milling goes wrong well you're kind of stuck with it perhaps I don't know how often that happens but it could so uh, so it's nice that all this comes together and SIG this is a SIG product uh, the red dot so they definitely support it um, one more quick thing about the red dot that I forgot to mention. It does have an auto off um, and it also has an auto dimming function on it. So uh, if you leave it alone for about two minutes and don't touch the gun, it will go off and then it will go back on from uh, uh, with motion. So uh, it's really nice that it won't run down the battery. So sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier, but, uh, but hopefully you stuck around for the rest of this uh, to hear the rest. So again, uh, it's a fantastic firearm. I definitely do recommend it. Uh, the SIG P320 Compact rx i'd love to hear your comments your feedback on this what you think what questions you have i'll try and answer them as best i can and uh thanks once again for joining me be sure to like subscribe and share and i will see you next time bye